The third way we're going to work with solving these systems, two variable systems, is going to be what we call elimination. And the idea is to take a look at the system. We want to create opposite terms, add the two equations together that will allow us to eliminate a variable, and then we'll have just one variable to work with. We'll solve for that one variable. We'll take our answer for the one variable, put it back into one of the original equations, solve for the second variable. So now to show you how all that works, here's a system here. 3x minus y equals 1, and 4x plus y equals 6. Now, as I said a little bit ago, what we want to look for is who, or we want to create, is what we call, we want to do this. We want to create opposites. We want to create opposites when we do this. So it looks like this. You look at your system, and I have 3x over 4x, I have a minus y over a plus y, and a 1 over a 6. Well, we're going to create opposites with variables. And if you're looking at the system, you can see that we actually do have opposites right here. The minus y and the plus y. Those are opposites. So since we already have opposites there, what it allows us to do is just add these two, these two equations together. And we'll then add them. 3x plus 4x, 7x. Minus y plus y cancels. 1 plus 6, 7. Now I have just an equation with one variable. Just divide 7 on both sides, and I find that x equals 1. So what do I do with this 1? I go back to my original equations, and I'm going to take a look at them, and I say, OK, I'm going to put the 1 inside one of those equations. It doesn't matter which one you use. You can put it inside either equation. You will get the correct answer. So if I take and let's say I'm going to look at these two equations, I see a plus here. I want my variable y to be positive, so I will be putting the 1 in place of this here. So 4 times 1 plus y equals 6. 4 times 1 is 4 plus y equals 6. Solve for y by subtracting, y equals 2. So now my final solution then is... 1, comma, 2. If I want to mentally check that, let's use the other equation that I didn't use for putting 1 into. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 minus 2, well, 3 minus 2, yeah, that is 1. Now I have to test it in both equations. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 plus 2, yes, 4 plus 2 equals 6. So therefore, I know my solution of 1, comma, 2 is correct. All right, and I hope this video doesn't get too long for us. There are two more systems I want to show you. There is a lot of detail with this. So if you need to pause for a moment, feel free to do so. Second system. Second system looks like this. I have 2x minus 5y equals 6. 3x minus 4y equals 9. All right. So looking at this system, we want to, again, create opposites. Sometimes the opposites are already there like they were in the last one. But now in this one, 2x and 3x, they aren't different, and they are both positive. Here I have a minus 5 and a minus 4y. Numbers are different. Signs are the same. So what do I do then to create opposites on a system like this? I'm going to actually do some multiplying on both equations. I'm going to take and put parentheses around both equations. And I want to have the same number with a variable and opposite signs. I have choices here. I can take this and I can take this system here and I can say, all right, I'll eliminate x. How do I eliminate x? I'm going to take this number 2. I'm going to take and multiply 2 times the bottom equation, all terms. That will create a 6x here. What is the opposite of positive 6x? negative 6x. So what do I multiply this top equation by then to get a negative 6x? That's right, it's negative 3. So in other words, I'm going to use this 3 to multiply times up here. The 2 from here I multiply to the bottom one. Why do I have a negative here? Both of these have the same sign. That means I have to multiply by opposite numbers, to, uh, si numbers with opposite signs to create opposites. And you'll see this as I multiply this out. So negative 3 times 2x, negative 6x. 
negative 3 times negative 5 will give me a positive 15. Negative 3 times 6, negative 18. So I've now, I have now multiplied on the top equation. I've multiplied every single term by negative 3. Bottom equation, multiply everything by positive 2. 6x minus 8y equals positive 18. All right. So I have a negative 6x and a positive 6x. Since I've created opposites, we will add the two equations together. 6x, negative 6x plus 6x, 0. 15 plus negative 8, or it's like 15 minus 8, 7y equals negative 18 plus 18. You might say that's opposites. Is that going to eliminate? No. Negative 18 plus 18 is 0, and I have to write the 0 there. It's the only thing on that side of the equation, so I have to write the 0 to hold that place. Divide both sides by 7. Y equals 0. 0 divided by 7 is 0. What do I do with this 0? I'll put it back into one of the top equations. It won't matter which one I use. I can use the top one or I can use the bottom one. So I'm going to actually, this time, I'm going to put it into the top one. 2x minus 5 times 0 equals 6. 5 times 0 is 0. So I have 2x minus 0, or just good old-fashioned 2x, and that equals 3. I'm sorry. Whoops. Bad Mr. O. Bad Mr. O. Bad Mr. O. Right, copy of 6, please. There we go. Now divide by 2 on both sides. x equals 3. So my solution then is 3, comma, 0. All right. So if we check that into both equations mentally, 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 5 times 0, so that's 0. 6 minus 0 is 6. Works in the top equation. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 minus 4 times 0, so that is also 0. 9 minus 0 is 9, so this solution works in both equations. Tells me my solution is correct. Now, I'll bet you can't guess what's in the next set of equations. Come on. Take a guess what I put in there for you. Come on, come on, guess, guess. Come on, you know, you know. Yes, there they are, our friends, the fractions. I knew you wanted to see them. I knew you wanted to see those fractions. So here we go. Here's an example with fractions in them. The first thing you want to do with fractions is I would remove the fractions. So find your common denominator, and we're going to multiply everything by that common denominator. For halves and thirds, the common denominator is going to be 6. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by 6. For my bottom equation, I have 8 and 6. 8 and 6. What's the common denominator? Yep, 24. 24. Okay, so let's go back to our top equation. And let's write it out here to the side. So 6 times 1 is 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So my first term is 3x. Next term, 6 times 1 is 6. 6 divided by 3 is 2. I will keep the minus sign, and I write 2y equals 6 times negative 3 is negative 18. There you go. Fractions gone in that one. Now, that's not so scary, is it? So now we have 24 times each of these terms. 24 times 1 is 24. 24 divided by 8 is 3. So I'm going to put this over here, 3x. And now I have 24 times 1. 24 divided by 6 is 4, so minus 4y equals. And 0 times 24? Oh, our friend 0. All right, now let's look at these two. Same signs. Hey, same number with same signs. What do I do with that? How could I create opposites with that? I can then take one of these equations, and I'm now I'm going to multiply it by, that's right, I'm going to multiply it by negative 1. I chose the bottom equation. You could do it times the top one also if you'd like to. I just happen to have chosen the bottom one. I'm going to turn everything in the bottom equation to its opposite. So here's what we do. We copy the top equation as it is, 3x minus 2y equals negative 18. Bottom equation, I'm going to turn everything to its opposite because I'm multiplying by negative 1. So then I have negative 3x 
plus 4y equals 0. 0 to stay 0. Now I have my opposites, 3 and negative 3. So those will cancel. Negative 2 plus 4 is 2y equals negative 18 plus 0, negative 18. Negative 18 divided by 2, negative 9. All right, so now I have to substitute back in. Do I really want to substitute negative 9 back in with fractions? You could do that. That is, that is a possibility. Yeah, that's always a possibility to do that. However, since this equation was multiplied by 6 and increased 6 times, these two equations have the same value. Same thing with this one. This one was increased 24 times to create this equation. They are the same. They just One was simplified or reduced or written differently, but because I have multiplied all terms by the same number here, they are the same equation. So I'm actually going to use these here. Y is negative 9. So let's find out. We say 3x minus 2 times negative 9 equals negative 18. 3x plus 18 equals negative 18. Subtract 18 from both sides. 3x equals negative 36. And x equals negative 12. So now my solution then would be negative 12 comma negative 9. So just to check it, let's check our numbers. We could also go back into the fraction ones if we'd like to, or we could go over into here. Either way, it will, it will work for us. Either way, no matter which way that we do it. I would still choose to work inside the integers since I have multiplied them all by the same number and it's the same equation. 3x, 3 times negative 12, negative 36. Negative 2 times negative 9, plus 18. So does that work for the top equation? Yes, negative 36 plus 18 is negative 18. Then I have negative 12 times 3, negative 36. Negative 4 times negative 9 plus 36. And those two added together equal 0. So that means my solution of negative 12, negative 9 is correct. All right, you've survived the looking at a fraction one. And I've shown you how to do that with the fractions. We've taken a look at what we have to do if we have to do opposites, to create opposites if everything's at the same sign. And we've taken a look at, hey, if it's already there, we can just add it. But the idea, again, is to create opposites in these systems Add them together to eliminate one of the variables. Once one of the variables is eliminated, you can find the answer for one of the two variables. Use that answer, substitute it into one of the equations, solve that equation for the other variable, and now you have both solutions that you need. Be sure that you ask me any questions that you have in class as you're working, and you can shut the video off now. Thanks a lot for watching.